Just talking through the bodyweight squat again, and this will be reiterated over in our squat form. Feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointing out. What you want to do is you want to squat down with the weight on your heels as best you can. So the weight on your heels. You want to keep your knees out to the side, okay? So our knees should always be, you should always be trying to point the knees out this way. So if I exaggerate it, this is what it would look like if I exaggerate it, okay? So what you definitely want to avoid is this bit. So any bit where your knees buckle in, you want to avoid that. And the other teaching point then would be chest, okay? Your chest has to come up first and you have to keep your chest up as high as you can. So if you keep your chest up and out, chest up first, chest up first, that's a good squat. Whereas if, you, if your hips come up first, all of a sudden your hips are up, and now in order to get your chest up and lift the weight, you're putting a lot of stress through that lower back and through that mid spine, and you have to end up lifting the weight with your back, okay? So three teaching points, weight on the heels, pushing the knees out to the side and chest up first. Okay, so we'll bring it over here and we'll just talk you through um, from the ground up. So starting at the feet, again, like I mentioned before, it's good to have your heel plates here so that you have a little bit of a raise under that heel and that'll take the calf out of it a little bit. In terms of footwear, um, to be honest, squatting in a pair of runners is probably the worst. It's the worst pair of shoes you could wear for squatting. If you don't have a pair of weightlifting shoes, get a pair of Converse and use heel plates. If you don't have Converse, you're probably better off squatting in your bare feet and again using heel plates. The reason we're saying Converse is because what we have is we have a, a thin layer of just hard material, so in this case cork, and what that does is it basically gives us a solid foundation between our foot and the ground. Now if you imagine like you were squatting uh, with a pair of runners, that's almost like squatting on this cushion. So in terms of transferring the forces, you have a little bit more of this wobble because you're standing more or less on a cushion and again, you're not gonna be able to transfer the forces from the ground up through your feet. Okay, in terms of foot position, again, depending on what kind of squat, you can be, there's a hundred different ways of placing your feet when you're doing a squat. So just for beginners, for starting off, what you wanna do is feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointing out, so again, 11 o'clock and one o'clock. So ultimately that looks like this when you're using your heel plates. Now, with the heel plates, if you want to just come over here for a second, with the heel plates, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have only the heel on the plate. So for example, you don't want to be in this position, okay, because we're losing contact with the toes and we're actually getting a lot of pressure in the midfoot. Okay, so we want the heel just the heel, the back portion on the plate, and then our toes on the ground, okay? We want to have the clearance here in our mid foot, so that mid, mid portion of your foot. When you are doing your squat, and as you become more and more advanced in your squat, you want to concentrate the weight to be, you want to concentrate the weight on your heel, but also the outside of your foot, okay? And we'll, I'll come back to that when I'm talking through the knees. So the weight needs to be going through your heel, and the outside of your foot, not your toes and not the inside of your foot. Okay, so if I'm to demonstrate that now. So I'm gonna put the weight on my heels and on the outside of my foot. And again, what I, what I end up getting is a good posture. I'm sitting back, my chest is up, my knees are out to the side, and that's all, um, that's all supported, again, by putting the weight through the heel and the outside of the foot. Now, if I put my weight on my toes and the inside of my foot, all of a sudden my knees are in and I'm kind of doing this really awkward posture with, with my upper body. I'm getting a lot more curve in my lower spine, as you can see here, I'm getting a lot more curve in my lower spine than if I had my feet out and back in my heels. One other point, another reason why we use the heel plates is again, we want to keep the spine in a good position. Okay, so we want to get a good clean line in our, in our spine when we're doing our squat. So if you take a look at my lower spine here, you'll see my pelvis winks under a little bit. And that's just, just purely got to do with my musculoskeletal system. Whereas if I use the heel plate, if you keep, keep a look at the pelvis again, there isn't as much of a wink, okay? And that's just got to do with some mechanical changes um, when using these heel plates. So that cleans up your form a little bit. So that's obviously a major plus. With our knees, again, we want to push the knees out to the side. And with our chest, we want to keep the chest up as high as we can. So if we're to grip the bar using the 
smooth areas on the bar, what you do is you gauge the distance you are from the middle. So obviously you want your grip to be equal on both sides. Now there's, again there's a hundred different ways to squat. Um, we're going to kind of teach a conventional one that's, that can be used for beginners. We're going to talk about a high bar squat, there's also a low bar squat. They'd be kind of your two most popular uh, squats, back squats. So a high bar squat is more or less, you're placing the barbell above your scapula, okay? So you've got that bone across the back of your scapula and the bar is just resting above that. Whereas a low bar squat would be below, below the, the bone, the bony prominence on your scapula, okay? So that would be a low bar squat, that's a little bit lower. Now, which one's better? Which one's better depends on what you're lifting for. If you're doing a power lift and you're trying to break a personal best and your technique is really good, you're probably better off doing a low bar squat. But if you're just a regular guy in the gym or a girl in the gym looking to do some squats, just go with a high bar squat. It's easier to teach and um, the form, you, you normally get the form a lot quicker. So again, grab a hold of the bar, walk in. The bar should be resting just above your the, the bone in your scapula. Now you don't want it up in your neck obviously, so you want it as far away from your neck as you can, just across the bone and the scapula, and you can stand up. Now, in terms of where your arms are, depends on how much range of motion you have in your shoulders. Some people find it very difficult to get all this way in because they don't have the range of motion in their shoulders. So, usually with beginners, you're actually a little bit wider, okay? In terms of where your elbows are, there's a couple of different things you can do. Obviously, if you're more advanced, you've more range. First of all, you can tuck your, your arms in, and then what you can do is you can actually squeeze your elbows up. So from the side, what that looks like is just squeezing your elbows up like this, and that just helps lock in the bar and prevents any movement or shaking. So if I have my elbows back this way, obviously, I don't have as much control over that bar as if I do here, okay? So that's... So we've talked through the feet and we're all the way up to um, the arms. One other thing that we can do with the neck, and um, people talk about where should you be looking, should you be looking up, should you be looking down. In general, it's a good idea to look about you know, five yards in front of you on the ground. Okay, So you don't have to have your head overly high or overly low, just kind of in a, in a midline position. So if you get set up, so I'm just kind of looking at the ground in front of me, so I'm just kind of looking at a, a point in the ground in front of me. I'm not doing this or that. What you can do is kind of brace yourself against the bar, okay? And what you do is you tuck in your chin and tuck in your head, and you kind of push yourself up against that bar. And that again will just kind of prevent any wiggling or wobbling of the bar. In terms of the grip, there's a couple of different grips you can do. Um, depending on again how advanced you are, what technique you like to use. Generally starting off just do a regular overhand grip or regular normal grip where you wrap your thumb around. Okay. If you're more advanced you can do a, a grip where you don't use the thumb but if you don't use the thumb what you have to do is you have to actually straighten the wrist. Okay. And that's important. What, that do, what this grip does is it helps you lock in the bar a little bit more. If I'm doing a grip without my thumb, if I'm doing a grip without my thumb, it's really important that I understand how to lock in the bar by activating certain muscles in my back. So again, if I'm not using my thumb, I have to get my no, I have to keep my wrist straight, I have to get my elbows up, and I have to get my my neck back or my shoulders even my shoulders will be nice and tight together as well so you'll really feel that in between your shoulder blades whereas a beginner isn't going to be able to get in this position so they're going to be a little bit more out like this if you're out this far you're definitely going to have to wrap the arms around it and they're not going to have as much control with their shoulder blades or with their elbows so for a beginner again just using the normal grip let's put that all together so okay Feet on the heel plates, again just the heel on the heel plates, toes slightly pointing out, feet shoulder width apart. We're going to put the weight on our heels and on the outside of our foot. We're going to push our knees out to the side. We're going to keep our chest up as high as we can. And we're going to go down below parallel. So again parallel is when our hips go below our knees, so I'm well past parallel there. And back up, okay? Again, the chest comes up first. So from this position, chest comes up first, and that'll just make sure that you keep the spine in a good alignment. 
Okay? Whereas now that would look like a little bit different if I did a different kind of a grip. So here's my more advanced grip without using my, my rapid thumbs. And you just have a little bit more control of the bar. There's less wiggle of the bar. And if you're going particularly heavy, trying to set a personal best, that might be a good one. So that's more or less how you squat. Uh, if anyone has any ideas about it, or any questions about it, or any alterations they'd like to make, uh, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please do subscribe. Uh, I hope that helps some of you guys. And um, Portaglaki in Abroad, I guess Brish to Gebla.